The humble site dumper. A fixed mainstay on most construction sites, whether that be roadworks, house building, large civil projects, these things are seen everywhere. However, in my opinion, a lot of the designs on these now, uh, even the modern ones as this is, is an old design essentially from the 90s that's been adapted to try and meet modern safety and, and, and improve the standards on things. And I don't think it's good enough. There are six things that I don't like on this dumper. Doesn't re relate just to this machine, but a lot of these points are across all of the manufacturers. Um, but on this particular one that I have on hire, uh, these are the things that I have been frustrated with, uh, annoyed by, think is bad design, um, and really think the manufacturers could do better. So, um, the Mechalek as it is now, of course, inherited Terex design, TA6 swivel dumper, six things I don't like on it. The skip shape is absolutely horrendous. It's got these little sides in it that just stop you being able to scoop material um, nicely out of it. Um, I find the muck wants to stick to it much more. Um, the reinforcing is actually on the inside of the skip as well rather than the outside so again you haven't got a clean face there. Um, it's just a lot of little trap areas for muck to get caught up. It starts normally in these corners and it just sort of then starts sticking all over the place. And it doesn't particularly tip very steep either. This is, you know, this is the maximum um, of its angle. And, you know, not even the not even the plate at the back is flat. It just it's just not enough to get the muck out. Um, even when you try shaking it quite hard, um, it, it just it just won't won't come out. Um, and also in swivel, as it is now, swiveled at 90 degrees, the, I mean, it, it literally almost tips on the tire. You know, if you were trying to backfill a trench, you know, they say these swivel dumpers are good for trench backfill. Well, you wouldn't be able to because your tire would be on the edge of the trench because it would be tipping here. Well, that's dangerous. Absolutely useless. Needs, needs a longer skip, needs to tip higher. Um, yeah, not not a lot to like here. So I move on to access and egress, and this dumper is better than others, but generally this is an issue on dumpers. Uh, generally, uh, particularly the older designs. Some of the new designs now coming out are, are much much better than this. Um, obviously, someone's come up with the great idea that they've improved um, the the access and egress by putting reflective tape on the steps. Well, kind of. I mean, I guess I know where to reach now, but uh, that's just a bodge on an old design. Come on, let's let's think about this. What do I need? I need a decent step. I need handles. You know, you could have moved this handle down here. That also could have stopped me standing on the mug guard, which would have been an improvement in actual genuine safety. because You then can't fall off the mug guards. Some people like to stand behind them when they're being loaded, that old trick. Do you mean it's not hard, is it? This handle could quite easily extend down here. Well, that could offer some extra foot protection if any rocks fell off or something, you know. And the step, particularly the bottom one, could be made bigger because when you look down them, it is just past the old one, the, the, sorry, the top one, but it's not, it's not great. And yet I should be coming down the steps backwards. Everyone should be, but does everybody? Probably not. So it would be nice if this step, you wouldn't lose anything in terms of, you know, the steering or, or anything like that. If this step was another, maybe even just another rung bigger to here so that when you're coming down them you, you can see them they're nice and easy um, and you don't knock your shin on this one which you can do when you're getting on this one because it's, it's not that far away from your knee simple things little simple things you know probably spent a load of money on r d putting reflective tape on it and no one has actually thought what the problems are and come up with a slightly better solution again i just think it's a shame it's poor design that brings me on to my next point. Um, there's a very complicated way. You have to sit down first, then plug the seatbelt in, wait for the machine to actually register. You've plugged your seatbelt in, which sometimes it doesn't. Then you can um, start the engine. Uh, and I get that. We're trying to make guys wear seatbelts. I completely understand um, that it's, you know, it is dangerous. People have died, but 
we're trying. I think we're trying to attack this from the wrong the wrong way, really. Um, training, better training um, would help massively with that. I don't think stockpile management is taught at all um, with uh, training uh, training schools or sessions. You know how to create a stockpile, how to drive on a stockpile, stockpile management. None of this is taught at all, and um, it, it simply having an awkward way of you know basically not being able to drive the machine or start the machine um, without sitting on the seat putting your seatbelt on well that's kind of one thing but if we had better training then guys wouldn't want to drive it without a seatbelt because um, you know they would uh, understand the risks behind that and again I think this is partly down and this is my main point here to these roll bars we have a roll bar that is just one bar going above my head. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't feel particularly secure just sat under that one bar. And whilst it would protect me and it won't deflect, etc., um, you know, it wouldn't be very difficult to design a proper roll cage. Um, you think about modern uh, racing cars, etc., um, and you wanted someone, you know, to, or you were designing something for racing that uh, had to take a, a potential, um, you know, basically falling over um, or crash they have proper roll cages um, you know you feel secure in one of those you also have a proper seat you know we're, we're coming up now with with the same old seat design um, that we've had for the last 20 years or more we've retrofitted a seat belt button to it that's fine there's pressure sensor in it so you've now got to get a wet bum when it's really cold and wet but you're not giving the operator any kind of of comfort um, or anything really it's all hard metals um, there isn't even a heated seat option for the winter you know when you, you're sat on these things and it's it's really cold uh, and I just think we can do better we really can do better um, a roll cage with a, a little bit of a roof on it maybe four pillars that would also solve excavators being able to swipe into your bloke I, I've got all kinds of ideas for these things I'm not a dumper designer um, but to me you get a man out here stood on the ground, um, you've got a machine loading, uh, you're, you're now a pedestrian and in a way you're more dangerous off the dumper than you were on it, let alone the fact that you've got to climb on and off this thing all the time, well that's potential extra slips and trips. Um, it, for me, if you're on that dumper, uh, you're in a much safer position, um, although with the current setup of these dumpers, you are not safer, are you? Because it wouldn't be too hard to... To, to potentially smack the operator with a bucket with that roll cage design. Cab dumpers have come a long way and improved that, and Mechalek themselves have got a great design of, of dumper now with the steps coming out the back. They've done a really good job on some of their new stuff, but this older design that's been made to suit, and, and lots of manufacturers are doing this, it's just not good enough. There is so much more you could do than retrofitting safety features like green beacons and stuff to it. It's just not it's not solving the cause of the problem and that's my that's my little piece on seat belts well, this is the average view of a dumper and yeah visibility is poor always has been especially when you really heap it up and this is an average load you could have got a bit more in there but we're being sensible so visibility is poor Mechalek have fitted front-facing camera but what you can see is what I can see. It's foggy, condensated. This is as clean as it can be. And I just can't see it. The screen isn't bright enough. I've got backlit reflection on it, off the, off the glass, the plastic on the front. And half of it's condensated up. And I just think this is, you know, typical conditions for a sight dumper. You've retrofitted a camera to this old design rather than try and redesign the skip or change the seating position or anything else you know retrofit a camera to it okay it kind of works but i can't see it you know maybe this works in a cab it doesn't work on a cabless dumper and this little puppy isn't much better either it gets water behind it um can't really you know you see see more at night to be honest than you do in the day and even the red lights you know there's a there's a red light on there for the handbrake on you have to really look hard to see that. It's not very obvious. You get this glare off it. Um, yeah, just uh, another, yeah, another element I think of poor 
design really. It, this, this could be so much better. And again on the subject of poor design, this lever actually hits. It actually hits this. Look, it fouls the handle. How can you design that? I've got my hand on it, I go even just to tip it straight, I hit my hand on that. Let alone if I want to swivel and, oh, it's just, why? How? Why does that have to be there? There's so much real estate here. I just, really, who, what, whoever came up with that just didn't, maybe from the old straight tip days, you know, when you just had a lever that you push forward and back, it, it worked fine, but come on. I mean, how long have we made these swivel dumpers? How can it hit the handle? It's ridiculous. So if I'm a child or um, even a teen or a young person or any person who decides they want to go and play on a building site, I come across this machine, um, there's no cab, I can obviously get on it and have a good go. And the problem I've got is that with no key in the ignition, as you can see here, um, this is how it would be parked up. Um, you know, drive stick is in neutral, I can have a good play with this brakes, accelerator, nothing happens. Now the problem is, is that the only lever that is live on this, of course, even with the skip down, this is live, but it won't do anything, that's fair enough, the handbrake. And this is just not acceptable now on modern machinery. I take this handbrake off, this machine, it could freewheel. Now it's on fairly level ground here, it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, of course, if it's clamped in with a digger, um, it wouldn't go anywhere, but you do see these things left around and about and I could quite easily take that handbrake off, be on a hill and let a dumper roll uh, out of the roadworks, into a house, anywhere. I think that's incredibly dangerous um, and really, it, we're coming up with all these ways to make you wear your seatbelt. Um, this thing has a very complicated process for that um, and that's fair enough. Guys have died from dumpers rolling over and then being thrown loose. I completely understand that. But come on, a handbrake that you can just take off with no restriction at all, not good enough in the modern day. Now this dumper has a stage five um, Perkins unit in it. Um, it's not they used to run JCB engines, but they've obviously switched to Perkins. It's still got a JCB gearbox, um, but it's, there's two things with this this engine it has stop start on it now actually on a dumper that's a really good idea great for fuel saving um, you know when you get back on the seat plug your seat belt in it'll start for you I like that that is a good feature my problem here is access is terrible now I mean this is again an old design we've got two flaps on the side you can take this off but it involves lots of bolts they've sort of made a hatch for little bits but it's, it's a really poor um, design to, to get to. Your fuel is here. I get the, the principle is you can do everything from ground level. I understand the principle behind it. And that is definitely a, a positive compared to, let's say like the Thwaites design where the, the seat sort of all folds up and you have to stand on the dumper to do that and things. So this is a much better design than that. But I mean, I've got no real access in here. Um, you'd have to take a lot of body panels out to get to um, to get to this, and uh, I, I just think it's um, it, it's a shame. Yes, you've got um, access to your filters and and things, and arguably maybe it's the same in in, in diggers. But I think you could do better. Rather, there there is improvements you could easily make. You could do a nice bonnet lid in this. This could lift up from from here, so you really get to to all of that. Um, without compromising any of the strength of the, the back end of this machine. Um, but my main issue with this new engine and the tech that it has on it in order to improve things for servicing or um, you know emissions and whatever, I've got no issue with DPFs really. They, you just have to know how to manage them and they, they are quite, they're very reliable if you know how to manage them. Um, my issue with this is that it broke down on me last week um, due to a service light not being turned off. So this machine has been serviced by the hire company that own it. Um, so there's nothing wrong with the machine. It's running absolutely fine. It's had fresh oil and filters on it. 
and it breaks down because it thinks that it needs a service. So because the hire company don't have the right laptop and plug, etc., to plug in and tell it, um, you know, yes, we've carried out the service, um, they thought, well, it doesn't matter. You'd just leave the light on, wouldn't you? Well, of course, it's reasonable. Um, you know, you don't want to pay uh, Macalek to come out and just turn the light off for you. It seems very expensive uh, things to do. Why bother? You've got your own records. Um, you know you've serviced it. However, it would appear this dumper will go into limp mode uh, after oh, over 100 hours, it would seem, um, of you not servicing it. it. Goes into limp mode and then requires uh, a Macalek mechanic to come out uh, and he spent about two minutes, if that, um, plugging the dongle in and turning off the service light. That has caused a breakdown. Something that I guess the manufacturer thinks, well, you know, we're we're doing a good thing here, we're making sure machines are gonna get serviced and, and that's gonna um, help longevity of our products, etc. Well, yes, I guess, but in this instance, it's caused a breakdown because the key you've left out here, there's nothing wrong with the service light itself, is you have not been able to let the user, the owner, um, to turn their own light off and as a result, the machine goes into limp mode. Is that a clever play to get your mechanics out to the machine? Um, you know, dealers make a little bit of money off this, I'm sure. That'd be a very cynical view of mine, but um, yeah, I can't own kit like this if in 10 years time, 20 years time, I've got to get someone out to plug it in. And then, of course, the technology is gonna be antiquated. You know, think back to technology we had 20 years ago. You can't even charge an iPod now, you know, an old iPod. The chargers have changed, things, things change, don't they? Things move on. And will the tech still be supported to keep this dumper going then? You know, it, it, regardless of the fact that it costs money to do, etc. I just think it's not good um, and it's not good reputation for your manufacturer because their product is seemingly broken down to the operator and the guys on the site. Um, the buyers of these things aren't going to like that because they've got to pay extra money to get you out just to turn the bloody light off. I don't think it does anyone any favours really, especially not long term. So yeah, manufacturers, please stop doing that. Give me a service light by all means, but let me turn it off. I definitely don't need the fitter to have to come out to turn it off for me at um, my expense. Ridiculous.